गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी दिस इज प्रोटॉक्स तो वेलकम टू अदर एडिशन ऑफ प्रोटॉक्स बाय सुपर प्रो डॉट ए आई आई एम योर होस्ट गौरव त्रिपाठी सी एन को फाउंडर ऑफ सुपर प्रो ए आई एंड टूडे दिस इवनिंग आई एम बैक विद अनदर अमेजिंग सुपर प्रो एंड एज यू नो बाय नाउ that uh, we keep featuring uh, super pros on this pro talk the intent is always to feature professionals who have uh, worn multiple hats and uh, who have uh, uh, been through their own journey which they can share with us and hopefully all of us uh, everybody who is watching will get to learn something from it so <clears throat> uh today yes i uh, have another amazing um, super pro gs uh, kumar who, uh, who who will talk about how to uh, ride uh, this crisis really and um, from a from a, a job search perspective or from a career perspective how to uh, do it right uh, and how to really get over this crisis so uh and okay uh, those who are watching it live uh, you already know that yes there is a chat box so you can put your questions in the chat i will take it towards the end of the session or i may take it even during the session and uh, uh, if you are watching it on linkedin yes you can put in the comments uh, the questions in the comments there as well i'll take it up and those who might be watching the recorded version later on uh don't despair you can still uh, put the comments uh, put your questions in the comments and uh, we will send it to gs and he can answer it later so don't worry and of course uh, you can reach out gs uh, kumar on his super pro page the link to his page is going to be in the description and the comments so with that uh, let's get started uh, over to you gs please uh, give a short introduction about you very good evening garo and uh, it is absolutely a pleasure and uh, delightful to be this evening with you all and uh, hopefully i'll give some productive inputs uh, in terms of career and job prospects in terms of recruiters perspective on how we look at this particular scenario and all that so before that as you said i'll give some uh, short introduction about the uh, back story so that you understand the little information little inside of your so um i did my bachelor's in computer science and master's in business administration after that i joined a recruiting firm as a it recruiter uh learned a lot of foundational information on recruiting platforms recruiting tools and placements and all that so which excited me to develop uh, as a career as a recruiter because it gives a lot of learning on a day to day basis like a sales profile so every day you meet with different people at different levels and uh, you get to know their domain industry and what not so that excited me to continue with the recruitment uh, career uh, so first 10 years is purely hardcore recruitment and placements and working with multiple industries all that which excited and gave lot of knowledge about the market industry and and if you are a recruiter you get connected to lot of uh clients in terms of candidates and in terms of uh, corporate clients all that so networking huge huge networking happens there and that's a plus for your uh, learning curve so first year 10 years went in coimbatore for uh, aggressive placements then i moved to bangalore for career options so i worked with uh, wipro and uh, manipal global education as talent acquisition roles and uh, this is something the other side of recruitment where i understood what happens during a corporate uh, recruitment so there i understood a lot of tools techniques and uh, multiple stuff related to corporate related uh, hiring on why a hiring is happening and what kind of cost saving the plan when they are recruiting a individual and all that i have learned and uh, due to personal reason i have to quit manipal and then i have to start my own uh, because that kind of uh, 
time was a very struggling time on 2016, uh, where I ended up with a lot of personal issues and started my own things. And uh, that's how GS Kumar uh, was uh, started. And uh, it's purely like career consulting firm, where we help uh, individuals, job seekers who are looking for jobs, help in uh, resume development, LinkedIn optimization, and uh, job interview coaching, career consulting on uh, career break, all that kind of stuff. So it's roughly around four, four and a half years of uh, uh, a strong uh, a startup kind of a journey where I have learned a lot, networked with a lot of people. And uh, satisfaction comes when people uh, get success uh, by uh, adopting our techniques and uh, recommendations and advices and all that. So people do chat and uh, give a lot of information when uh, they come back and say, I got a job. Right? Right. So it's pretty emotional and sensitive. And that gives a great job satisfaction when you solve a great, great issue, which is very, very sensitive to them. So that's the journey so far. Um, <clears throat> and this would, uh, in this uh, webinar, I would like to give a lot many insight in, some, in terms of jobs, careers, or uh, the uh, process which is happening inside all that. Mm -hmm. Because this is the industry where a lot of gossips and a lot of uh, dynamics happens uh, more than a political game or uh, movie industry. Right. No, so, great. I think there is uh, there is no better uh, <laughs> better service than I think the, the biggest challenge that most of the people uh, always face is uh, getting that dream job, yeah, or moving up in the career. So definitely, I see uh, if, if uh, you are uh, you are able to get some help from someone who can who can put you on the right path. Or either of those or both of these yes definitely that will be great so um uh, great uh, thanks uh, gs for the introduction uh, i would want to start with uh, your uh, journey itself so when um, i i see that uh, yeah you uh, you did uh, you uh, did your computer science obviously uh, then um, uh, you uh, did your mba and you started uh, the recruiter but uh, uh, while you were doing MBA, yeah, while you were uh, studying and uh, and what was uh, going on in your mind? Um, so, uh, going after or starting as a recruiter, was it a, a conscious choice? And what made you uh, go after uh, that uh, career path at the at the start of your career? No, while doing an MBA, uh, back in mind, I had the. Uh inspiration uh, to become an entrepreneur right but uh, at that point in time there was no such kind of an option where we have this uh, meetups linkedin social media nothing was there right so it was purely depend uh, uh, upon certain individuals or networking all that happens but uh, we don't have a career uh, roadmap for becoming an entrepreneur or no such advices uh, was available at that point in time Right. And starting a recruiter is something, um, MBA is a, a course where you give a lot of basic information about marketing, HR and all that. Where HR excited me because uh, it is a people oriented job. So you get to meet with a lot of people, collaborate, understand their psychology, sensitivity. That inspired to get into a HR kind of a domain. But uh, HR generalist is something i don't want to go because it's something uh, more to do with process oriented task execution of task all that rather i want to combine like a sales and uh, recru uh, hr kind of a profile where recruit uh, recruitment was the right platform to do that because in recruitment i strongly believe you should have a sales attitude in recruitment otherwise you will not be very very successful right so uh, because as a recruiter, you have to wear multiple hats. You have to represent uh, uh, another organization to your candidate where you have to sell the potential client to the candidate. Then mm -hmm. you do a lot of sales. You have to sell this candidate to potential client. 
where you have to negotiate a lot in terms of multiple things. So sales, hardcore sales uh, attitude is required for a recruiter. So that's why this excited me a lot. And uh, that's how uh, this consulting form uh, kind of a business also got uh, an understanding on how it works. Like you know, most of the consulting firm, HR consulting firms, uh, may not have much of numbers of employees. There are minimum four people, five people, 10 people to the max, right? So that is the industry where you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Because you have to involve in sales. You, you have to know how many number of clients are available. So, uh, yes, I'll, I'll interrupt you there. <clears throat> so good uh, that you say that, yeah, recruitment is more like sales. Yeah, I personally have, uh, have seen, I've realized over a period of years, yes, it's, it's, it's not that simple as it sounds that you're simply calling up people and yeah, you're getting them. It, uh, it's never that simple. It's definitely so great analogy with sales. But when did you realize that uh, recruitment is very much like sales? When, when did that realization happen? Well, after working for six months, uh, I realized that uh, I'm not a HR person. I'm, I have to wear multiple hats. Because uh, you, uh, you 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 got to know that what is the next month uh, next quarter's target, right? And how many potential clients are available mm -hmm. to reach that target? You know all that analysis. You have to sit with your MD to understand what it happens because he keeps pinging you on the number of closures, number of clients, and all that. So you have to run your thought process towards that as well. So that your execution in terms of recruitment happens very very successful because the number of hit ratio it's not in our hand as a recru in recruiter's hand is there is nothing like almost 60 percent you get into a stage where you push candidates for interviews rest all it happens during uh, depending on the candidates technical performance cdc negotiations fitment all that is out of control right so obviously, you have to increase the number of placements, which is a, a chain reaction for your number of clients, plus number of positions, plus mm -hmm. interviews, uh, job offers. It's a 360 degree chain. So that's how I understand how it works and all that in a consulting firm. That's a base point. Okay. And then <clears throat> you started. Uh... You started with uh, recruitment and uh, a certain field, but then very soon you were uh, recruiting people across uh, different sectors. So, how did uh, you? Uh, how did uh, that happen exactly? Like, uh, did you face a challenge when uh, you started, uh, say, recruitment from uh, one sector, for example? So. Uh, you started with IT, but then you had to recruit for VFSI, for telecom, uh, textile, automobile, etc. So all of these different sectors. Did you face a challenge in uh, jumping uh, to these uh, many sectors, or uh, uh, how was it? No, when you have a passion towards something, uh, jumping into different sectors is not a very uh, great thing. It's it actually inspires and motivates to do more work, right? So uh like i said it's a sales role and every every day you get to know new things you know uh, but and how did you how did you prepare yourself like was there was there some preparation involved or was it just seamless that okay today i'm doing it tomorrow i'll start doing bfsi how was it uh, definitely initial understanding must be there uh you have to understand the client requirement understand mm -hmm. the background of the client all that is required initially any, any understanding uh, on the sector side, is, is that required? No, when we started, see, like uh, this scenario, this uh, decade is different from the uh, Esther decade. So when we started recruitment, there is no classification on multiple things. Like if you have, if you are a recruiter, you have to recruit anybody, right, from a, a contract uh, entry level position to a CXO. That is the level of recruitment we started with. Right now, there is a lot of classification in terms of only IT, only mm -hmm. non-IT, only volume hiring, you know, the, all that classification comes afterwards. Okay. But when I started, there was no such uh, classifications at that point in time. 
So uh, in that day, I used to walk three different clients, three different positions. Wow. So, uh, so that's how like one will be in the morning, like Java, .NET, all that testing, all that. Afternoon, it will be more of uh, BFSA sales profiles because uh, sales guys, they cannot call in the morning. So afternoon, they'll be like little relaxed. So we'll call them for insurance jobs because at that point in time, insurance became privatized and a lot of companies popping up and all that. So we were doing lineups, everyday lineup for sales manager for BFSI Telecom. So it was like more exciting, like, you know, I have to find a guy for this. You know, that's how placement works. And that's how you're, uh, you're motivated to get more incentive, you know, incentive and knowledge, passion works together. And then that's how it produced results. So I don't see it as a challenge, but learning was, uh, I mean, initial preparatory things uh, was there to understand the background of the industry, competitors, you know, all that preparatory aspect, definitely uh, one or two days is required so that uh, your execution uh, and uh, number of interviews, all that has been very successful. So here again, um, as you uh, as you progress, yeah. So as you uh, mentioned earlier that it now it's very different. Now uh, it has gotten very specialized than uh, than uh, the earlier decade. But uh, in this, uh, why do you see that now the specialization uh, really happened? That uh, now uh, people look for this. So uh, if you are only IT or so the sector specificity which has come now, what do you think uh, is, is the reason, has been the reason for that? Understanding the terminology is very, very required in terms of certain sectors mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, they, the employees or consulting firms feel that, okay, if you're from a computer science background, you understand the terminologies a bit more easier rather for if you are coming from an engineering background, okay. right? So if you are an engineer and have done MBA, then you're a good fit for automobile sourcing, manufacturing sourcing, all that. That is a perspective they see, but uh, uh, I don't see or call it as that's a right kind of classification, right? So if you have to cook, you just have to understand the recipe and then uh, follow that uh, aspect and then prepare it, that's all. Uh, if you are more being more specific, more focused towards more narrow towards a particular sector, your opportunities are very, very limited. So right now I could see healthcare recruiters, you know, that's very, very specific to only healthcare. But even though there is a lot of uh, uh, sub verticals in healthcare, they will learn a lot in healthcare, but they may not know what is happening in telecom or uh, the other IT sectors or BPO, they may not know. So that's the uh, negative point, I would say, uh, because the process wise, it's uh, exclusive, mutually exclusive for every other sectors right now. Right. So IT, as you know, there will be multiple rounds of interviews where the process delay and other things has to happen. So the recruiter has to be really, really aggressive to bring the candidate into the stage of offer or uh, I mean, onboarding all that. Because a lot of efforts happens because IT is a domain where uh, till last year, a lot of opportunities were popping up and each candidate were holding multiple offers and you have to sell, really sell the company uh, and candidate together, all that happens. So IT recruiter is a very, uh, really, really aggressive guy, aggressive background has to happen. Otherwise he cannot uh, survive. Okay. As far as engineering recruiter, the uh, Understanding towards the terminologies or uh, jargons, when, mm -hmm. uh, once that is there, those professionals are really, really good. Like they don't have to be pushed for interviews or they uh, even they call you to, you know, uh, for further follow ups and all that. So that's the differentiation uh, I could see in each different sector. The thought process, the uh, professionalism varies between sectors by sectors. That's the differentiation I would say. Wow, very interesting. You know, I never uh, imagined that this is so nuanced at, at, at that level. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, uh, you've been uh, through journey now, I, I see. So, you mentioned about uh, GS Kumar, you know. So, uh, how did that happen? 
when did you decide uh, to start uh, gs kumar and what was the motivation behind uh, starting that it's all about survival <laughs> so uh, it so happened like some uh, very personal loss has happened uh, during my work uh, scenario 2016 uh, my father passed away and uh, oh. i have to resign my job and go back to native all that happened and when i came back and searched for jobs there was nothing literally nothing and uh, i was keep giving interviews but you know right like for talent acquisition role supply is more than the demand so uh, when you go with that level of experience obviously your salary levels are a bit more higher uh, when it is compared to the other individuals so i got a very bad hit on uh, when i attended interviews do i have talents do i have vast experience all that the ctc front i was keep get uh, keep getting rejected so that's when uh, i chose uh, to start with something so that i start surviving uh, on this scenario because i can't keep going on interviews and ending up with nothing right so i started freelancing uh, the resume writing part because since i have the backup of uh, recruitment experience i know what is required in a resume and uh, bit of content writing experience was also there with me so that's why i started my freelancing uh, journey so that uh, i mean for to pay my bills in a month and you know survival all that had happened it so happened was bangalore was so uh, kind and uh, accommodating and helpful uh, for a freelancer uh, like me who was like no nothing starting from nothing and i just posted in facebook linkedin and whatever tools i have that's how i started my journey and it so happened couple of clients started six months was huge struggle uh one i get one i may not get that way so after six months it was never ending because i started with some usp in process because uh, i can't be uh, one among uh, 100 can 100 resume writers where resume writers is something you can find in every street you know so that is the number of writers you uh, you have available so what i made it a point is okay this uh, random way of doing things may not work let me adopt some uh, concepts which i have learned in mba <laughs> so that uh, i implement so certain things experiment it there is nothing to lose mm-hmm. uh, just uh, trying to implement something float it let's see what it happens so that's way i started with me uh, unique selling proposition for resume writing so my usp is infographic resume where i wow. uh, prepare uh, resume in ppt and then convert to a pdf uh, when i say uh, infographic resume uh, the look and feel cosmetic changes will be in bar chart and a uh, lot of uh, career timeline will be there so for that recruiters can quickly understand the information rather than the uh, 15 so a quick question on that gs so a uh, get that you do the infographic and uh, people get so it it definitely i'll say from a layman perspective yes it starts looking nice but uh, how do you uh, prove that yet it it really does work is there any any in terms of the result that okay you Uh, uh you did this infographic resume for somebody and he got a job so in terms of the results can do you have any numbers that you can talk about that where the employability uh, goes up because of uh, such a, a resume format definitely see most of the uh, uh this gossips or thought process what happens is uh, we have to prepare our resume for the ats related stuff right so that's how people talk the ats is something uh, applicable when you apply for a job posting right so because ats is integrated in lot many corporates and consulting True. firms all that so my resume may not work in that way because uh, i uh, work on for the unpublished jobs so unpublished jobs in the sense recruiters proactively do searches for their requirement rather than being reactive to job postings because of the time consumption it takes no oh, right? interesting so if you post a job today overnight you will get 2000 uh, profiles 
relevant profiles, irrelevant profiles, all that you get overnight. You know, uh, that's the level of uh, uh, I mean, number of hit ratio it happens through job posting. Hmm. But a recruiter standpoint is something I can uh, I will be reactive in job posting where I have to screen every other resume hmm. and to fix the particular profile for my position, right? Which where, where which it is results in delaying process. Second thing, I may not get a right fit, 100% right fit for my uh, profile. All that happens. And it's a very time consuming process. So that's a reactive process. For, for this, I don't prepare a resume. Okay. I prepare a resume for proactive recruiters where they source profiles from Nokri, LinkedIn, Monster, all that. Okay. okay. Where they use search strings, key skills to source profiles. Mm -hmm. And they use the CTC uh, budget for uh, aspects. How is the availability of notice period? Mm -hmm. All that is a factor for considering a profile, right? So there you have to give your resume in a very, uh, I mean, three things you have to give in a resume. One is factual information. Uh, you quantify whatever you have done in the past. I call it three different ways to represent this. Uh, time, cost, and effort. Whether you have saved time, whether you have uh, saved your efforts, where you have uh, saved the cost, all that you have to quantify it and then project it in the summary so that they understand, okay, this guy speaks factual information, mm. right? Very interesting. So uh, so to reiterate, it is, it is about that whatever you are talking about, talk about results and in an objective manner, not that I have been doing X, Y, Z, right? Yeah, please. Yeah. Carry on. Huh. So, uh, second thing is uh, don't give more information also because it will be overwhelming. And uh, usually, these IT profiles will give more information because of the number of projects uh, they have done. So, 15 projects, 16 projects. <laughs> See, recruiters, we don't even read and we don't even understand what is the projects we have done in the past, right? So, that way, overwhelming content will not be also helpful. At the same time, don't uh, restrict to one page, two page, or all that. That is also extreme. Like, I don't even get enough information to shortlist you, right? So that also needs to be stopped. So give in enough information where I see there is a potential to match, and it should trigger me to call you for an interview. That should. Uh, be that's that's very interesting, uh, Jay, that you uh, talk about. So I have this question always in my mind. What then? What's the ideal or the ideal number of pages that a resume should have it is actually a customized uh, <laughs> uh, 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 profile depending on the uh, candidate because okay uh, the more uh, information information which is required for a job is what we have to give right it should be more like a teaser rather than a, a full movie right? wow okay a teaser should uh, trigger you to go to uh, a movie rather than you know you, if you just get get all full information, then what is the point, right? Yeah. So it's like so, it's it's if I if I say it uh, right, uh, it's like your resume should be a teaser in a manner that the objective of the resume is to just get that call, correct? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, you you got the right, uh, uh, I mean, aspect. So this is like face by face, right? Uh, like we call it in construction, phase one, phase two, like that. Yeah. So phase one is. We, you have to get an interview call. Okay, for that you have to prepare your document. I and mean, document in the sense resume, LinkedIn, Nokri, whatever. Prepare it. First phase. Second phase is you get an interview call. Go go to that interview stage. There is there should be a consultation has to happen with the hiring manager and the candidate, right? Only then you will also get to know more pulse towards the profile and the company and background, all that. And uh, you also get to uh, I mean project yourself in a customized manner uh, uh, based on the uh, expectation from the employer, right? Most of the candidates mention every other information, whatever they have done in the past, like 10 years, 15 years, I've done this, I've done that, okay. But it becomes an assumption and miscommunication, both to the hiring manager that, okay, this guy have done so much. So what is it uh, contributing, really contributing, you know, that way. Or otherwise people will give very vague information that it miscommunicates and there is a loss of opportunity, right? So rather, our aim is to get into an interview where we have 
we have a chance to express ourselves right so you customize your offering based on the number of questions which is suited out right so that way you picture but as far as the resume is considered it's it only have to give only three things one is factual second is easy to read right you should not give so many information and which is very vague people don't have time yeah and the one thing which i understood uh, while recruitment is we uh, I mean, which i always uh, inform the clients is we recruiters being corporate recruiters or consulting firm recruiters we work on targets right uh, we have to we have a submission target every day like six profiles in a day nine profiles every day that much okay right we can think of the time spent on each profile right so max to max 10 seconds that's what we look at it wow so people call it six seconds seven seconds but i would say like 10 to 15 seconds is max to max for a resume okay. right to uh, really understand whether it is a potential for a uh, job that's how we look at it so with that 15 seconds whether you are able to communicate what you are uh, uh, trying to communicate that uh, that i'm a potential candidate for your job that we have to communicate rather than giving you know a lot of cluttered information messy information which uh, which i don't even want so it should be like a business proposal rather than the resume mm -hmm. right in a business okay. proposal which is very very specific okay this is the service this is the cost that's all right sure. Sure. there is no multiple things that's how it should be so be it it sales hr whatever it is quantify it that's the input i want to give uh quantify contemplate in terms of time cost effort and think what you have done in the past definitely you could have done something in the past only thing is you have to sit and contemplate put it in the paper and then transform into a right sentences in the resume that's how it works so this resume writing uh, service itself if i talk about them at uh, so what kind of a person or at what stage i am that i should go for such a service it's like um, anybody can go for it anybody should go for it or is it something uh, that uh, you say that okay if, if you have uh, uh, you have a criteria to start with they're saying that uh, yeah if you fit this criteria then only you should come to me for for the service the first thing is uh, the challenge what uh, they have faced in the market if uh, they are they are keep on applying then there is no interview calls then there is something wrong right or otherwise uh, if they are keep on sending to various known people familiar people and uh, they keep uh, giving a feedback on okay this is good that is good because resume is something everybody can give opinions right so uh, uh, that doesn't need an expert to uh, give opinion so anybody uh, can give an opinion so that way they keep on iterating and end up in wrong results rather uh, go for professionals and then prepare a very great resume because most of the people 90 percent of the people may not know how to put it in a paper on their background right skills and all that because uh we can talk a lot but when we are putting in, putting in a paper it should be like very structured one it should give a story it should give highlights uh, it should give uh it should appear as if uh we are an expert in that field rather than you know a desperate job seeker true so that is actually a skill mm. where which needs to be outsourced rather than doing it ourselves right okay so we, okay. Uh, we have templates uh google provides a lot of information templates these that right but it is only a template and uh, you can just fit the information there but you cannot inspire recruiters right because you don't know for which particular job you are applying for for which particular position you will fit for so one uh, uh, static resume may not fit for every other job. It's a very dynamic content. So you have to customize, you have to know what is your skill, what is your minus, all that you have to know. Then you highlight the skill which you can really contribute to the business. So I uh, guess when, when somebody approaches you for this, so even, so not just for resume on the writing, but even uh, uh, let's say I want, your help i want to seek your help um i want your coaching to prepare for an interview so all of it when somebody approaches you yeah what's uh, 
the what's the process how how do you get started do you ask them um, like lot of questions or uh, uh, you just uh, get on a call and you get started how how does that look like the engagement uh first is we have a talk to career advisor kind of a service where we uh, uh have a zoom call meetings or telephonic discussions on whatever their uh, challenges it's an individual uh, customized uh, individual uh, challenge which uh, they want some advices towards it so where we do a phone consultation on their pain points and address to it uh, be it a career break or lost uh, job in layoff or not getting interview calls whatever challenges related to jobs and careers we do a phone consultation uh, and then we resolve the issues and that way we start with the other services if at all it is required and uh, how how is it uh, really like is it uh, uh, does it happen over a series of sessions or multiple calls or is it just one call wherein you uh, you resolve everything ha the first call will be more of understanding the issues okay and uh, if at all if, if we are so we can solve it uh, through some recommendations or advices uh, all that they can solve the issues but mm -hmm. if it is required uh, for preparatory preparation in terms of resume or linkedin or uh, other aspects we recommend them some of the services where it will help them uh we help in optimizing your nokri profile as well and uh, linkedin optimization as well so that uh, your profile views gets increased uh, massively because uh, being a recruiter i know how it operates from the recruiters uh, desk on nokri so i will give some tricks and tips to uh, improve their profile performance in nokri so that it, it's a happening place most happening place is nokri and linkedin so there if you are optimizing your profile views and uh, number of calls will definitely increase so this uh, have resulted in uh, with, with some of the clients it has resulted in 10 days 15 days and all that but their really wow. results have happened and uh, they got interview calls and uh, they cracked some of the so to, to 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 understand it clearly you are saying just like in 10 to 15 days it can happen yes wow yes. wow that's ah. a, that's that's really a really super turnaround time so website a lot of people do the seo for google yeah. for google to understand i am existing mm -hmm. same way we have to do it in nokri and linkedin but uh, in a different uh, tricks and manipulation oh, so that's how yeah 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 so you just have to appear uh, i mean you have to create visibility among recruiters who are searching for a particular skill rather than you being one of the candidate of 2000 candidates who are doing the same process of applying to jobs that's, that's right. the differentiation we are trying to Interesting. So now uh, you call yourself a career coach uh, as well. So what is uh, what is a career coach exactly? Career coach. Uh, most of the uh, professionals who's uh, who completed ten years, fifteen years, they are got got stuck in some of the areas where uh, they don't know what to do. uh because they have a strong hardcore background in one particular domain mm -hmm. but they they are not getting any uh level up in terms of designations or ctc or you know they don't know what really you have to do so, so they get they get stagnant at one level and are, are able to move up the ladder yes yes and uh most of the uh, sectors or domain have uh, uh supplies more than the demand so i mean obviously they are struggling to get jobs and all that so yeah. and lot many women who have a career break due to personal reasons mm -hmm. they want to come back again so okay. yes. they don't yes. know uh, where to start so for those people we do career coaching sessions so to give inputs uh technical inputs and more than technical inputs it's the confidence level we have to give uh to the potential uh people where they should realize they are really skillful you know that is the thing so because when you individually you contemplate you feel like there is something lag here i can't do this i cannot move out all that but when it comes to a uh, uh, professionals you discuss and understand that you are really skillful i project them that this is your core skills here you can really contribute okay mm -hmm. 
so that way i make them realize that these are the areas which is your strength which is your skill where you can contribute to current employment so there we start the journey to uh, more than uh, technical inputs it's giving the confidence and uh, giving psychological analysis on what they are up to all that and then prepare their resume linkedin and all that so that uh, they get into the market so again talking in terms of the target audience your target audience for this uh, career coaching so uh, would you say that this typically uh, you're looking at uh, professionals who are um, uh, mid uh, level so maybe they already they have 10 to 15 years of experience uh, is is that your target audience it's a bifurcation uh, i mean challenge is going to be the same for every other individual right from freshers to cxo getting mm -hmm. interview calls is a common challenge right right, right. so for which we address uh, 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 i mean fix the issues in terms of resume and all that so uh, in terms of customized uh, challenges we address it but target audience if you could see it starts from freshers itself fresher to cxo level oh great okay so um, <clears throat> all of the freshers alert <laughs> you can talk to uh, gs yes and then how does this career uh, coaching thing work? Like uh, uh, it's, it's same, uh, you get on a call and then uh, is it a program of a few sessions uh, is, uh, or, or how does it happen? Huh. Uh, as I said, initial call will be understanding the whole background plus and minus and all that. Mm -hmm. Later we uh, provide our own services, recommend our services to take it up and uh, do a 360 degree of preparations. No, so it's the preparation which meets the opportunity. That's how it is. So, right? so is it a standard program uh, of certain a number of sessions, or is it uh, uh, is it customized that customized for each individual? How is it? It is very much customized based on their uh, pain point and budget. Wow. So, wow. Uh, so that way we start giving inputs because I also realize that uh, you know. When we are we are you are a job you are not in a job then there is always struggle to uh, in terms of investing for ourselves right uh, there is it's a very sensitive issues so there we address that okay based on your budget you take you can take up certain packages services and all that so that way we produce results and people who are really really uh, have challenges we do some extra efforts in terms of getting into the stage of interview you know, that way uh, we help. Not that we limit to certain packages and uh, we tell that, okay, for this particular cost, only this. No. So for certain really struggling people, we push ourselves to uh, more uh, chances. And is it uh, something that is always a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session or do you also like take a group session? Uh, so having a few, uh, four, five or whatever, six, eight people in a group, uh, you do it. How, how is it? See, job and career is more sensitive and more customized. So I take it on a one-on-one -on -one basis because uh, mostly like senior level people, uh, they want to, uh, they cannot disclose them, uh, disclose just like that. I'm, I'm just uh, desperate to look for a job and all that. It's very, very sensitive. So mostly I take one-on-one -on -one sessions, which uh, they'll also be very free to express their uh, pain points, weaknesses and all that so that I address quickly on their uh, uh, so uh, i think very important point um, I, I think for everybody yes so whatever you um, talk about when when you uh, you when you talk to gs uh, about your career uh, career coach yes it's a one on one conversation and yeah stays confidential so yes that's helpful great cool. okay uh, i'll uh, uh, i want to go back uh, to the moment so, uh, when you were struggling, you know, when uh, when you were down and uh, you said that yes, uh, you were trying to uh, get back uh, in the uh, in the job and that's where things. So what was, what did you realize that out of that um, uh, that experience? Yeah, what did you learn out of it? It's a fantastic question. Uh... It's very very sensitive and very very emotional so uh when the the kind of emotional things which goes inside is very very tricky see once you are 
jobless your confidence level is goes down drastically right so you don't even realize your potential that you can do certain things right so and uh, when you are not occupied a lot of negative things pops up a lot of thought process happens like right? management of those negative aspects is really really crucial so uh, i practice uh, heartfulness meditation for uh, managing myself and managing the thought process all that and keep at a balance in terms of thinking and uh, maintaining peace and uh, maintaining my stress level all that that helped a lot number one number two i wanted to become more busy so i started uh, networking with a lot of uh, people and networking started attending meetups all that wow. Wow. so that uh, you know i get along with people understand and understand that like me there are 100 100 people right so that way if you are sitting individually at home and all that you feel that you are low uh, and uh, you, you cannot help rather if you go on networking with uh, meetup and linkedin and a lot of seminars which was happening physically at that point in time you get to know that these are normal and it is acceptable right? um survival wise i started freelancing all that so networked a lot talked to spoke to a lot of people all that that way i kept myself busy rather than uh, becoming very passive and uh, dull right so and i was keep on thinking creating new packages which can really helpful and uh, that's how the process but job search process was parallel parallel because i cannot survive with uh, you know the random income which i am generating per month right so i wanted a hardcore job so for that i did nokri optimization for myself wow. which resulted <laughs> which resulted in uh, getting more interviews uh, rather than just applying the jobs so that way i adopted my tricks for myself and uh, got more interviews attended multiple interviews but the challenge was remain the same like ctc was too higher we cannot accommodate all that happened but i thought that is a point i realized okay this is working but not for me but it can work for the other people also wow right? so that where i uh, clubbed this particular service to my resume writing so that okay resume writing is now resume is dry, right now prepared now what happens for the interview now i do optimization for you so that you get interview calls because that is the challenge for many of the candidates skill level candidates so that worked wonders right so in uh, another six months this uh, this is the package where i clubbed and sold for better price and that worked wonders and lot of people start referring uh, because they since they got results they started referring so their friends and colleagues and all that wow. but one thing is uh, by looking at the infographic resume they look and feel they got inspired second thing uh, since they got results uh, comparing to the previous months uh, previous months i have i got only one call now i got five calls that's the range of uh, results which was generated through nokri optimization so that communication happened and shared with uh, through the colleagues and friends so that way references came up i started increasing my pricing because i have generated results you know wow. that way uh, slowly slowly it picked up maybe god's grace or i mean that uh, uh, that i would call it that way or uh, the the kind of bangalore people who trusted me uh, all that i'm very very thankful i am giving my gratitude towards them you know this is this is super this is super yes really i i so so to everybody here is here is a, the important note so whatever gs was talking about yeah uh, he hasn't cooked this thing from air or you know it's not talking about things based on a theoretical uh, study he has practiced it himself he has perfected that art by doing it himself and producing results for himself and then iterating the same with people over a period of time so yes what you will get from ds now is is you know something which uh, just try test it proven and definitely not theoretical very much practical it works so yes please uh, uh, do think of it while uh, while reaching out to him yeah perfect sounds uh, sounds 
sounds really really good and uh, so now uh, jis what's your advice uh, so given of course you know the current crisis and uh, um, also before the advice actually i'll ask you only what have you seen since the lockdowns of march onwards what's the how's the how's the recruitment scene the employment scene that that you witness right now how is it uh, <clears throat> people generally term it as layoff but i term it as restructuring so restructuring is what has happening uh, with uh, multiple uh, industries where uh, i would call now their their thought process is uh, whether this role is relevant for our business whether this department is relevant for our business you know that way the thought process has changed uh, i won't call it as layoff because layoff is something appearing like negative i don't want to be give like negative input i would call it restructuring so that way uh, since business has to survive they have to uh, take some decisions in terms of relevancy of business survival right so that's the core of any business business survival is required for continuity right uh it's only a temporary setback um in terms of job prospects you have to bifurcate the industries where the the industries which is giving more output or the industries are not giving so much input i mean output right output have reduced drastically with couple of industries uh starting from airlines and hotel automobile construction and real estate textiles uh fruits and logistics which is these are all the industries which was depending on more towards physical movement physical aspect presence all that physical whichever is required a physical presence movement all those industries the output got reduced so as a result they have to restructure the hiring so right so that way so if you are choosing a job you have to select industries which is performing and giving more output right and industries which can sell their project uh, product and services digitally that is the industry wow. you have to choose so that the company is also growing you also growing right so if they if they can't sell their product uh, uh, offline at this point in time there is no logic right so e-commerce is such industry where digital sales can happen it industries because a lot of cloud uh, dependency is there for the people who are working True. at home right True. so in bangalore you know 75% of our people are working from home all that people are depending on cloud softwares True. right be it zoom meetings be it slack or whatever you call it tools which you are using cloud services so it and software is really really booming right so it industry e-commerce industries and healthcare of course so lot many products and services are popping up due to this uh, level of pandemic and uh, uh, the kind of fear which has been developed crafted mm -hmm. all that right so these and industries which has more uh, output so, so choose choose the industry first and then uh, look at the companies in there right yes definitely you got the point right first road map first fixing is the industry which industry is performing you list it out right uh, that way and uh, the one more industry i forgot is the gig industry startups which do multiple works for uh, many of the industries content writing website all that right and training edge tech uh, education and training becoming massive like everybody yeah. has started teaching training corporate training skill development this is becoming massive massive True. right so this industries you pick up list it out and focus your energy towards only to this industry there rather than applying to multiple industry which will give you a bad result amazing so yes now that you are on super pro uh, what is it that people can uh, reach out to you on your uh, super pro ai page uh, initial consultation because uh, each individual pain point is different so they can book a call for uh, career consultation for uh, their pain point with uh, career break or career transition they want to do 
or not at all getting interview calls, whatever it is. So we have fixed all issues in last four, four and a half years. Okay. So a lot of iteration, a lot of things has been successfully implemented and only those successful results we will give you to uh, for an action item rather than, you know, just giving advice. Wow. Advice doesn't work here. It's not an astrology, right? <laughs> right. Uh, it's a skill where it's not by chance you are getting a job. It's for your skill you are getting a job. True. Right. For the skill, whatever it is required, we will give you recommendation on certain action items so that you implement and get into uh, the right job. Great. So, uh, guys, you heard it. Ajayas is available on his uh, Super Pro page. Uh, the link is available in the chat. It will be available um, in the description as well when the video is posted. Do reach out to him. and uh, uh, So that will, again, uh, uh, when you reach out to him on Super Pro page, you get to choose the uh, the date and the time slot. Yeah. And then the call happens very much on uh, the Super Pro AI itself. So yes, it's uh, again very personal one-on-one -on -one conversation that you are going to have with GS. So please go ahead and uh, uh, try it out. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, GS will be able to help you get that uh, dream job or make that uh, jump in your career. So, yeah. Great. Definitely. Definitely. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Jis. Uh, With that, uh, yeah, yeah, we can uh, we can close the session. We are about time. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us and sharing the amazing, amazing uh, your journey as well as uh, uh, the wisdom I say and the experience that you have uh, gotten through uh, all these years. And uh, I'm so, I'm very sure everybody has uh, taken note of the interesting tips that you already shared. And uh, so, uh, and how people should really uh, go about the job search, improving their resume, and yes, thinking about the career. So uh, I'm sure everybody uh, loved it, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, we'll definitely share the feedback with uh, with you later on. And uh, with that, I'll close the session. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, and thanks a lot to all of you guys for joining us uh, today evening. Yeah, it's actually wonderful, uh, uh, Gaurav. Like, uh, it's a very, very friendly uh, anchoring rather than being more professional because I felt very, very comfortable in this one hour. <laughs> uh, it was more like talking to a friend rather than, you know, a very a professional setup. You made me so comfortable. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to give a lot more inputs in terms of jobs and careers. Uh, definitely, so we, we are we are uh, uh, we are already looking forward, you know, to have you back in one of our uh, uh, different sessions. So definitely, uh, great guys. Uh, thank you to so all of you who are uh, uh, tuned in live here or on uh, the platforms. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, you'll be able to watch the uh, recording again on different platforms on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, everything. And uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we will be back. Uh, I will be back with another amazing uh, Super Pro in the next session of uh, Pro Talk next week. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.